Hello, welcome to my craft room. My name is Tina. This is Simply In Stitches and this video is one of my craft room knitting vlogs where I shall be sharing what's going on in the craft room, what I'm knitting on, what's going right, what's going wrong and yeah just having fun in the craft room and you're invited to bring your knitting, get your cup of coffee and settle in and just have a bit of fun with me. So welcome. So today I am casting on my February socks. I am following Dear Designs has a knit along for the year and every month there's a prompt and then you knit socks for that prompt. So the prompt this time is Violet. So I have chosen for my yarn, it is Rose's Knitting Shed and it's the Visions of Sugar Plums. And so it's all of these colours. I'll put a picture of what it looked like in the actual skein. I think that's interesting to see what it's like as you're looking at it, as if you're buying and then what it looks like when it's actually ready to go. And then also then what it looks like when it's knitted up because it's sometimes hard to tell and to choose a pattern, isn't it? So I'm holding this with Drops Nord and this is the plum. So this is an alpaca wool blend yarn from Nord. From, from Drops even, <laughs> the name's Nord. So I'm going to have this as my contrast. I am going to knit the fidget socks and they are by Amy Stringer. Now, when I say I'm knitting those socks, I'm not really knitting those socks because they are toe up and I prefer cuff down. I've knit toe up before and I just didn't enjoy it as much as cuff down. Because I've knit so many socks, I just know the recipe I like. I know how my socks fit generally, so I like to try and stick to that. So what I'm doing is going to use the fidget sock pattern because it's non-directional. I'm just going to knit it the other way around and just use that. But I'm also going to have my usual heel flap and gusset, gusset heel so that I can just know how that's going to fit me and my normal toe. So as I say, I'm not really following the pattern for the fidget socks, but I am following, well, I'm following I'm not following the recipe of all the individual bits of the socks, but I am going to follow that stitch pattern to get that the lines and things. Because I think in this yarn where it changes colour, I think that's going to turn out nice. So that is the plan. So I have cast on so far this morning. So that's all I've got. So I knit mine on nine inch circulars. Where should I hold it? Away from my hoodie so you can see it so it's nine inch circular and I am just doing a two by two rib and I have got oh, if you can see that I've got a flower stitch marker because I thought that'd be in keeping with the project so I'm going to carry on doing the cuffs first of all I like quite a thicker cuff so about that much. I'm not one for counting rows generally. <laughs> I'm not precise, I'm not perfectionist. I just like to have fun with my knitting. So I'm going to do the cuff and then I'll come back to you and we shall talk about the actual fidget pattern that's going to be going in the main color. What type of cast on do you like? I always seem to go now for a double two knit two pearl cast on i just like the flow of it do you like to do a twisted rib they look very nice but they're not so nice to do are they and i find if i do a twisted rib i do a shorter rib because i want it to be finished whereas if i do a normal rib i'm more likely to go a little bit longer <laughs> and once they've finished knitting them and I'm using them on an everyday basis I'm not really concerned about the twisted rib so for me it's not really something I do 
What about toe up socks? Have you ever tried a toe up sock? What do you think to them? I don't know why I don't like them. I don't like the start of them. I know that because I, I think it probably is because I've done so many top down that just because it's so easy to me now. But um, yeah, I don't like how they start really, the toe up ones. And like I said before, I've got my heel that I like and I just like the flow of that sock. And I think now that the sock is just a relaxing knit to me rather than learning something new. So I think that's why I just like a top down. I say top down, cuff down. And it's just something that I can take anywhere with me without any instructions. And apart from the heel turn, where the only thing I can't remember is where to start when, when you do the short rows, how far along to go before you turn to be in the middle to do those stitches first. That's the only thing that I can't seem to remember. I can even remember the Kitchener stitch now. So, um, yeah, apart from that part, I can literally take, pick up yarn, my needles and go and nick, nick, <laughs> knit a sock on the move so if I'm going on holiday means I can take away less if I'm just doing the plain vanilla sock and just keep going I don't have to stop and look at instructions so I think that's why one of the reasons why I love doing socks as well as the wearing I do wear them every day I'm very much a jeans person so socks are ideal to throw on with jeans aren't they Yeah, I'm going to carry on with this and get some more rows in. I wonder what you're knitting on. If you are knitting, please let me know in the comments so I know what you're working on as well. I've finished an inch and a half of rib and now I've just done one round of knit. And the reason for that is because I've cast on 64 stitches, but I need 66 stitches for pattern. So I've just done one plain round just to add in those extra stitches. So I've got the right stitch count to introduce the other yarn. So now I'm going to start using this yarn. I was asked in a comment on last Sunday's podcast about joining different colour yarns and how I join it. Different people do different things, but what I do is the most uncomplicated, of course, because this is simply in stitches. So I just cut off, I'm trying to hold, not hold it against the top because it's the same colour. I just cut off a tail of the old yarn enough to weave in because I'm going to use that to join it up later. And then I literally just start knitting with the new yarn. And so I will sort of twist it around. So I will put one over the other just to hold it a little bit more, but it is the sewing in that is actually gonna hold it in place. And that always works fine for me. And yeah, I find with the sewing in, then if there is anything going on, you can just manipulate a little bit. <laughs> Duck and dive. <laughs> so yes, that's all I do. So I'm going to start the first pattern repeat. So on this, there is nine rows of the pattern. and But there's only three different rows. All the, all the rest of the times, it's just repeating what you've already done. It's only um, mainly knit some purl, there's also a slip to purl wise with the yarn in front. So you're just slipping the stitches from the one needle to the other. So there's nothing hard in this pattern at all. So I'm gonna start doing that and I shall report back to you to show you how I'm getting on when I've got through some of it. It's a very repetitive stitch repeat. It's really easy to keep a track on where you are. You're just repeating a lot of it all the time. And those slip slips are very easy to do. 
so yeah i'm enjoying it so far i'm really loving how the color is popping i think that's working really well i'm loving how those slip stitches are knitting up i think they're they're looking really effective and i like the way it's highlighting the color of them i really think it's the right yarn for this type of pattern i don't think i'd do it in a plain i think it would be wasted on a solid color i think you definitely need something that's variegated to actually show up those bits so eh? bits <laughs> words to you <laughs> those slip stitches that's a better term so yes really enjoying that that's how far i've got on day one so i've got the whole month to finish that off oh let me just show you the inside um for that how i start off and what it looks like with that yarn with it being loose So that's how it is by just starting and then just wrapping a piece of yarn as you knit around it. So that's pretty secure and then I will finish it off then with just by sewing in those ends at the end. So that's day one. I've got the whole month to finish this off for that prompt. So yeah, please come back and join me on Sunday for the podcast and you'll see how far I've got. I think it might be a little bit addictive, so I'm hoping to get down to the hill by Sunday. Let's see how I do. So thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.